it's time for another Ask Me Anything video, and we're talking about the aging narcissist. Do you have a narcissist in your life who's getting a little older, and you're kind of starting to wonder, when will it ever end? Well, that's exactly what we're talking about today at queenbeing.com. So, let's get started. Closed captioning provided by Athena Moberg and cptsdfoundation.org. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and let's get going. This question actually comes from several of our Spanily members or fellow survivors of narcissistic abuse. Does it ever end? Do the narcissist's games ever stop? And what is a true sign of recovery on their part? Is it just an impossibility? So these were several questions kind of mushed together from several different survivors, but they all come down to can the narcissist change? Do they change as they get older? And will the games ever stop? Narcissists a lot of times make you feel like you just can't touch them. And what I mean by that is they seem like they go through life unscathed. They break hearts. They ruin lives. They leave a trail of destruction everywhere they go. They are the living embodiment of chaos in some cases or the extreme opposite of that excessive order in other cases. But all of them leave a big wake of heartache behind them. They don't have any remorse. Nothing seems to be able to stop them from emotionally devastating and in other ways ruining the people closest to them. But there is such a thing as the narcissistic collapse, and that's when the narcissist is no longer able to hold on to the false self. Their false self is kind of laid out there for everyone to see, and the real self sort of comes through because there's no more barrier. There's no more space between the two. Maybe that's because they've pushed everyone else away. Maybe that's because they don't have anyone else admiring them or whatever. And maybe it's just because people realized who they were, but now they find themselves alone. And that is when it's very difficult for family members who are still stuck around to deal with them. This is when the collapse happens, when everybody around the narcissist starts to wake up. Sometimes maybe for female narcissists, their looks are fading and they're not as able to manipulate people as they were before. Sometimes for all narcissists, simply as they get older, they become less able to charm you, they become less concerned with charming you, and that's when everybody kind of pushes away from them. And when they find themselves often spinning, and then they go quickly into collapse mode. It's almost like a mental breakdown, where the narcissist will become isolated, withdrawn, depressed. They really don't want to face the world, and this is often concurrent with not wanting to face themselves. And most narcissists don't ever get past the collapse. They continue in that mode for the rest of their lives. Of course, this is around the time that many narcissists will begin to think about the one that got away or how their whole life is a big sham. Sometimes they even go so far as to recognize that they have in fact been emotionally abusive to people in their lives. But that's rare. Now, a lot of research will tell you that there is a benefit to being a narcissist when it comes to business and building alliances and things like that. But this is only in the short term. In fact, a 2016 study confirmed that while some narcissists, especially those charming ones, have a little advantage when it comes to business and even making friends on the short term, in the long run, it doesn't work out well for them. A team of researchers from Poland gathered up 273 college students who were freshmen. They organized a group Group, and they ran a popularity contest, literally, with these students. They tracked this popularity over the course of their college careers. Now, what's interesting is that while those who were charming and upfront and out there did certainly impress the fellow students early on in the game, within three months, those students' charm started to wear off, and other students began to take the spotlight when it came to popularity in the group. What it came down to, the researchers decided, was that as the semester continued, those who were charming, that charm kind of wore off for them. And those narcissists who were part of that group, well, people started to know them better. People were more aware of who they were and could see through their little facade a little easier just in that semester. When people learn that that charm is superficial and that they have selfishness issues and, of course, the fact that they have the tendency to manipulate and exploit other people, well, that leads to less popularity. Psychologist Anna Sarna, who was the lead author of the study, said that people with a high EQ actually ended up becoming more popular as time wore on. So while the really overt out there charmers did get the initial attention, once people got to know them better, they preferred the people with the higher EQs, you know, the empaths. 
Now the empaths did take a little longer to build alliances, and I bet you can guess why that might be. Probably because they were being more careful about with whom they align themselves. And perhaps not too surprising, these more reserved students, the empath students, were more likely to have a larger social circle at the end of the experiment. And their social circle was more likely to like them and admire them individually. So what's interesting about this is that the researchers actually compared it to the tortoise and the hare story. You know, where the hare runs faster, but the tortoise, by the end of the race, has ultimately won. Narcissists coming in with all the cockiness they could muster, but ultimately leaving unsuccessfully when it came to the social circle. What does this have to do with aging narcissists? The study shows that narcissists have a hard time maintaining long-term healthy relationships. And while people who have a higher emotional intelligence level, or emotional quotient EQ, are more likely to take longer to make friends, they keep those friends longer and ultimately end up with a larger social circle. And I think what it comes down to is that as narcissists go through this process of aging, they lose their ability to charm people as much and then they certainly lose the ability to bring in new people. So a narcissist who's always been surrounded by people may one day find themselves feeling completely invisible. Now I know some people will feel sorry for the narcissist here and maybe worry that they'll end up friendless and alone and feel bad about that and I understand that. But here's another thing to consider. That same study showed that people who were in the lowest 10% of intelligence and the lowest 10% of narcissism were also among the least popular. Getting older is not easy for any of us, but for narcissists who are very emotionally immature, it is far more difficult. It might sound like I'm giving them a pass because their narcissism makes it harder for them, but people who are emotionally immature have never learned new techniques and tactics and never get a deeper understanding of the people around them. In fact, for some narcissists, they're literally toddlers, emotionally speaking. Others I've seen go up to, you know, age 15 or 16 emotionally. Now, obviously they have intelligence just like everyone else, but imagine having someone who is emotionally five or six years old inside of, say, a 75-year-old body. What would that feel like to that person? They lose their looks or their charm. They develop increasing health problems just like everyone else, but they don't know how to cope with it, and a lot of times they're left with no support because everybody's tired of them. And if they are still dealing with someone, a, a spouse or a child, they're usually abusing that person emotionally. They don't get the benefit of emotional wisdom. They don't learn to be strong on a personal level. So essentially, they just become sort of a shadow of what they used to be. Not more mature, not better, just a shadow of their younger self. Now, there are lots of different ways they're going to victimize you here. And you will see that the older they get, the more cruel some narcissists will become. And they're more likely to exploit you as a person or anyone they can. Some of them will go so far as to even victimize themselves. So they will portray being a victim of you or someone else in their lives in order to get attention from other people. This is certainly not exclusive to the aging narcissist, but it is a tactic that is more often employed by aging narcissists. Guilt trips, poor me, pity parties, all of that stuff. I heard someone say that a narcissist ages like sour milk. They kind of start to stink as they get older. I think we mean that proverbially. The truth is that many toxic narcissists have ruined many lives before they get to that point where they consider themselves aging. They don't have any sense of remorse about this. And while they sure might have some regrets, and they sure might doubt themselves here and there, and they certainly don't like the consequences that they've achieved as a result of their lifelong abusing behavior, they will still never feel accountable for the life that they earned and they will always feel like somehow this was done to them. All right, now this brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, do you know an aging narcissist? And what sort of advice would you offer to our Spanily members who are dealing with one? Share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comment section below, and let's talk about it. I've been doing a thing in my videos where I'm sharing a screen grab of my subscribers in fast motion. And I had a couple of people say to me they would prefer that I don't do that, so I'm going to stop that. But I do want to say thank you so much for being a subscriber, for being part of my family, and for being part of my community. Everyone who watches my videos, likes my videos, interacts with my videos in any way, comments, you're all helping me to spread my message just a little further and help even more survivors to overcome narcissistic abuse. I really appreciate it, and I just want to say thank you one more time. And while I'm at it, I'd like to offer a quick shout out to my amazing channel members who support me through the YouTube channel membership program. With their help, I'm able to produce more videos, be more connected to you, and offer more free resources at queenbeing.com so that you can discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse without having to pay for anything.
that means the world to me because it is my life's mission to help as many people as possible to do exactly that. Thank you so much. My inner circle includes Essa, Tiffany, Stephanie, Denise, Deborah, Missy Etta, Lou, Mental Hilarity, Julie, Michael, Shauna, Kimberly, Jen, Trisha, Stacy, T Bear, Sylvia Rose, Thoy, Victoria, Julie, Patty, La Precious, Beautiful Purpose, Abraham, Chantel, Ashley, Carrie Ann, Charity, Steph, Dana, Mo Cowboy, Shay, Christina, Ray Ray, T, Christy, Boku, Alda, Smith and Wesson, Ms. Lisa, Martha, Freedom Lee, Mindy, Lynn, Marsha, Linnell, Phoenix, Cherie, Alice, Carrie, Angel, Bible News Radio, Linda, Charlie, Laura, Pierre Lala, Janet, Paul, Delilah, Sarah Lee, Marlene, James F., Trisha, Life's Revival, Lorenzo, Deborah, Roxanne, Susan, and my very first supporter, Angela Falsetto. Thank you. Again, I just want to say thank you so much for hitting that join button. Your support really does mean a lot to me. Again, thank you so much. That's all I've got for you right now, but as always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life, and hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. Now, before I go, make sure you take a look at the videos I'm leaving for you right there and right there, and while you're here, hit that subscribe button so we can stay connected and continue on this healing journey together. I'll see you soon.